like a follow-up to the website creation video in this one we'll be talking about designing your website so that it's not shitty and I'll do some explaining on what is what on your WordPress dashboard so you don't get lost like I did onwards towards the sexy intro Welcome to the WordPress dashboard of this amazing website called New Year New Me 2017 and before I start explaining away and start designing the website I do want to tell you this what we're going to do here is going to help you a lot because this is going to aid you to get the basics down. There are videos out there that explain to you how you can make an amazing website following their step-by-step -step 2 hour tutorial and map props to the content creators but chances are you're only going to be able to make those given websites and you're probably going to be even more confused. I know I was. So first thing I usually do when I'm on a new and fresh website is go to admin, scroll down to account management and click on generate password. Naturally WordPress is gonna talk shit and is going to call your password weak but we're going to take this cell and confirm use of weak password. Update profile. Now if you ever get lost on your WordPress dashboard what you're going to do is press on the dashboard button which is going to bring you back believe it or not to your dashboard and if you want to see what your website looks like at the moment click on the menu with the name of your website. So what kind of a site can we help you set up? I don't want help WordPress, I got this. At the top of your dashboard you can see this annotation by WordPress saying that your site is currently displaying a coming soon page and that once you're ready to launch your site, click here. This is for a good reason. There's an option to put your site in maintenance and whenever somebody goes to your website they are most probably going to see a page with a maintenance picture on it. If you have a lot of traffic to your site and you want to surprise people with your new cool design, this can come in handy. Now to actually do some explaining on all the menus that we see on our left side, let's actually start explaining things. First thing we see is this big dashboard menu that gives us an option to go to the page which we are on right now or to go to the updates page where we can update any theme or plugin that we might have installed. I'll explain what those two are in a second but if that updates box has a notification with a number on it, you're going to just click on it and press update on anything that might be out of date and voila, you're going to get this page saying that everything is up to date. Second menu that we see here is Jetpack or at least that's what I see. Now Jetpack is a plugin by WordPress and plugins are ways to extend and add to the functionality that already exists in WordPress or in other words software thingies that can make your website better if you choose the right ones. I recommend creating a Jetpack account because this plugin is made by the same company that is running your website aka WordPress. Create an account for free and do it as soon as possible because you're going to get tools that can tell you how much and where your traffic is coming from and tools that can protect your website from hackers and tools that can make your site faster. I don't think I need to explain how you can create your account there. If you scroll down, you can see what Jetpack has to offer. Up next is the post menu, which is where we're going to go if you want to create new content. Submenus that you get when you hover over the post box are all posts, add new, categories, and tags. Let's start from the bottom and work our way up. Tags are used to give Google an idea what your website is about and rank it properly. So if I were to make tags for this video, I'm filming right now, I would probably use website design, WordPress tutorial, sexy mellow voice and so on. I rarely visit this page because you can do the same thing when you are already adding in a post. Next up are the categories. This page you should visit because later when you're designing your website you're going to use the categories that we're going to enter in right now. This can be used to make menus on your website. So let's make some categories. For demonstration purposes we're going to write in major key. Drake and J. Cole. Uh, they're all popping up at the side there and something useful you can do is click on uncategorized and change it to something that you're going to use the most because this is going to be your category by default. Now we can go to add new. First thing you can do is add a title which is going to be Stoner Academy is the best. And in the body of the article, we're going to write in shameless self-promotion, but seriously, check us out. You can see that the permalink just popped up right under the title, which in other words is the URL to the article. Edit if you want to. In the body of the article, you also have these tools here, which are the basic tools that you need 
to edit an article. And you can also find some hidden ones by clicking here. You can also choose between text and visual, where text stands for HTML code and visual as in what you see is what you get or what you write is what you get. Yeah. On the right, you have the option to change the status, the visibility and to schedule the post. Below that, you can choose a format, uh, which I rarely do. And next are categories, then the tags. And finally here, you can choose the image that you want to be your thumbnail in a way. Click on Set Featured Image and Upload One. Click on Publish. Now let's check out our posts. Here's the one we just made and next to it is the default WordPress post that is used for demonstration purposes just to show you how your website will look like and chances are you're going to want to remove it but we're going to leave it here for a while but if you did want to remove it, you should just click on this trash text. This notification on the right here are the comments. We're going to get to those in a second. Media. When you hover over media, you get library and add new. The library is used to see what media you have uploaded on your server and add new is to upload new ones. Of course, when you're in the post page and you add new media there, you're basically doing the same thing as if you're doing it from this media box here on the dashboard. I usually use this when I'm searching for a video or image I've previously uploaded and for whenever I'm bulk uploading. Now the pages menu. This menu looks exactly like the post menu, only difference is that you don't have categories and tags. If you click on all pages, you're going to see that you have a sample page by default which is used just to show you how it's going to look like. You have the same functions on add new. But the difference between a post and a page is that posts are entries with their own categories and tags that can be set on a page and a page is a static website page. I don't know how else to explain it. Comments. This is where you're going to prevent your website from being spammed into oblivion. There are plugins and options out there that allow you to disable the comments but if you have an enormous website and a lot of fans I wouldn't recommend you do that. This is a default comment by WordPress and you can do multiple things to it such as approve it, unapprove it, reply, quick edit, edit, spam, trash. At the start when your website is still growing and you don't have a clear fan base you're going to get spammed by bots and by people from your niche trying to get comment backlinks but we ain't gonna allow them. I usually send most to spam. Marketplace and this is where you can buy a theme, a plugin, a service, a tool, happiness or anything but I never use it because there are quality plugins and themes out there that you can get for free if you're internet savvy. All you need to do is a little research to find them. Appearance and plugins, we're going to do them last because these two need a lot of explaining. Here you can see all of the users, you can add new and you can edit your profile. On the all users page, you can see who has access to your dashboard, what's their email, how many posts have they made and what role do they have. In the add new, you can add their username, their email, their first, last name, password and then you can change their role into whatever suits you best. Just know every role has a different type of access to your dashboard. Your profile. This is where you can edit your own profile and change it any way you like. You saw me earlier, go to this page by clicking on the top right box. I suggest you do make your profile more aesthetic because whenever you post something, it's going to show who made that post and it's going to have this looking fresh. Tools is a menu tab in the WordPress admin sidebar. It contains tools to perform some non-routine management tasks. You got available tools, import and export. I don't use these a lot, but you can use them if you want to export all your content and put it on another CMS. Or you can use import if you want content from a CMS to be placed on your WordPress website. Settings. First up, we got general. Here you can change the title of your website as well as the subtitle but we can also do that in the appearance menu. Here you can change the email that receives the notifications, the time zone, the date format, time format and so on and so forth. Writing. I suggest the only thing you touch here is the default post category and the default format nothing more if you're just starting out. Reading. Here you can choose whether you want the latest post to be shown on the home page or a static page where they can later navigate your website from. If you're going for a blog type website, use the latest post option. If you want to have a sales page, then use a static page. 
Below you can choose how many posts should be shown on your homepage before the viewer has to click on a continue rating type box to get a new set of posts. And below you can choose whether or not you want the posts to be full length where they can read them from the whole page or you want them to just see a summary of the posts and click it if they want to read the whole thing. If for some reason you don't want your posts and pages to be ranked on Google, press that button. I recommend you don't and I recommend you stay away from that button because Google rankings are the shit. They make a ton of money. Discussion. Here you're basically going to get the more in-depth options to mess around with your comment section. You can make a blacklist of who you don't want to be able to comment. You can change some comment settings and things like that. Media. Media settings is where you can kind of play around with the thumbnail sizes and with the organization of the media files. Permalinks. This way you edit how the URL of your post is going to look like. I usually set it to post name so that it shows the name of the post only, not some date or category. But if you do have a huge website and you want your stuff categorized, then by all means mess around with the permalinks. Anything below settings is going to be a plugin and sometimes some plugins tend to place themselves in the settings menu, so keep that in mind. Now let's go into plugins. You got install plugins, add new, editor, and premium plugins. Premium plugins is where you buy some premier plugins or upgrade old ones to premier versions. I don't use that. In editor, you can mess around with the code of the plugins, but if you have no idea what you are doing, I definitely recommend you don't do that. Here on this page, you can see some plugins by default. You can remove these first two so that your website is a bit quicker and if you want to remove these other ones, you would have to deactivate them first and then delete them. Go to add new. Here you can get new plugins by either uploading them from a zip file or by adding new ones out here. Go to popular and start scrolling down. The ones I would usually get is WordPress Supercache, Yoast SEO and WordPress Security. Uh, WordPress Supercache to speed up my site, Yoast SEO to be more flexible when doing SEO and to index my website quicker because Yoast can generate a sitemap and WordPress Security to protect my site better. I'm not going to explain in depth about these plugins because there's a lot to explain about them, Yoast SEO especially. So either wait for a new video on that or start researching on your own. Go to installed plugins and activate your new plugins because by default they will be deactivated. Appearance. This is where you actually start designing your website and changing your theme or in other words the template on which your site is going to be built upon. These three themes are here by default and they suck so don't use them, be cool, be like me. On the left side you have customize which is going to take you to a page from which you can start editing your design more in depth. We will go to that customization page in a second. Widgets. This is where you can edit the sidebar by adding or removing widgets. This is where you use the Facebook widget to link out from your website to your Facebook fan page. But you need to have Jetpack for that, so that's why you should have it. If you go to your website, these are the widgets we are talking about at the moment. And if you want to remove one, go to widgets. Click on the widgets you dislike and click on delete. Menus. This is where you can create menus for your homepage. Give your menu name here and go to categories, view all and select all and add to menu. This location should be primary menu, save menu. Header and background menus take you to the customization page and this editor menu takes you to a page from which you can edit the code of your theme. This is what it looks like. And this is where you can start editing away. But only do it if you know what you're doing because this can fuck up your website. Go to themes and add a new theme. Here on Future Filter, they make it easier for you to filter out websites that have the features that you like. So you can choose a blog, an e-commerce website, education, entertainment, food and drink, holiday, news, the list goes on. But I already have one in mind. Click on Customize. Site Identity is where you can change the site title and add the tagline. You can add in your own logo to be placed in the header and the site icon where we can place the favicon.
save changes and click back. The color is where you can change the color of the background. The background image is where we can change the background of our theme. After this, every theme is going to have its own different customization page, so the best thing you can do is go through all of them and see what your theme offers. If you don't like it, you can always choose another theme. So my best tip to you is go through the trial and error process where you try different things out. That's the only way you're going to learn and also try learning some code to the point you understand what is what in the editor because that can be really useful. Now check out any other video out there where they show you how to make a specific website and add your own twist to it. That's what I would do and remember, depending on what type of method you're trying to apply, you're going to need a different type of design. So definitely research away. Check out Story Academy if you want to find profitable methods to start working on right now. And if you want to learn about affiliate marketing or check out any of our other videos where we have some dope content. Like if you like it and subscribe if you love it. See you in the next video.